and welcome to Burning Questions. And uh, I don't want to give away too much, but there's been some some pre-burn debates. And I can tell you right now, do not miss a second of this. It is going to be on like Donkey Kong, like Pac-Man, like Super Mario Brothers. I'm joined by a cast of characters we've seen on Burning Questions before. We'll start with you, Greg. Uh, Greg Sugars, congratulations on the recent milestones for both yourself and your lovely wife, Jess. The team is flying. Yeah, thanks, Jay Bond. No, it's been a um, yeah terrific start to this season, and uh, yeah, a few feature race wins uh, both on the training and driving sides of things. So uh, yeah, couldn't be happy with the way things are going. Now I know you're not overly tall, but you look like Dickie Knee at the moment. Are you sitting down? Are you crouching, Tiger Hidden Dragon? Like what? What? How are you that low? I am sitting down, yeah, just uh, yeah. had a v- busy morning here working, so uh, time to take a load off. Um, just be careful. Uh, Andy Gath also joins us as per usual. Greg's one of those funny guys, isn't he? Super successful. Normally in racing and sport, when you get too big for your boots, people start hating you, but Greg's the kind of guy, you just let him into your house, then he starts cooking dinner, then all of a sudden he's got your wife, and you say you want the keys to the car, and you do it all with a smile on your face. He's a funny character. He's, he's quite manipulative that way, isn't he, Andy? Yeah, no, he definitely is. And, um, you know, as we as you said earlier, they're both having great success. And I'm sure it's going to continue on to Saturday night by looking at the fields. And all of a sudden you're sleeping in the bungalow at the back. And then he says, actually, we want to do something different with the bungalow. We're going to renovate it. So you, you'll have to... Skeeter, how are you? Great to see you as well. You're no longer in... Uh, we need in 400 Epsom Road. You seem to be back in the uh, in the home digs. Yes, just mixing it up a little bit, Bond. And a big happy birthday to Jess Tubbs as well. I uh, saw that this morning. So uh, obviously one uh, one part of the Lara J team farm and a, a crucial part. So a big happy birthday. Jeez, I'm bloody pleased you reminded me. Certainly slipped my mind. So uh, we're sending a text straight after burning questions. Let's get it some sponsors. Don't, don't worry. She hasn't noticed at all, Javon. Don't have to be first. <laughs> you know, if you don't like, wake up at six o'clock, well, I don't wake up at six o'clock in the morning anyway. It might still be up. Um, whether you are celebrating a win or shoveling in the stables, you want your staff to look their very best at their total peak. And you do that with the uniforms from Hip Pocket Workwear and Safety. They've got you covered, all of you, for clothing, protective equipment, and plenty more. Check out hippocketworkwear.com.au in capital letters. I think you can do it all lowercase if you want to. First question of the burning questions. Will the captain pilot Metro final on a win, or can they make him hustle and create the right race for others? And you love the way the p- pentameter that I you Now, sometimes they're confusing, but it, it flows, you know? Anyway, uh, I think Andy's got a different opinion, Greg, but we're going to go to you first. What's going to happen? Can our captain just cross him for speed? Will he get there eventually, or won't he get the front? Are you worried you won't get the front here? No, well, I think I can, um, but at what cost? I think I'm certainly... Like, I found the front very very comfortably um in the heat of this race he was never fully extended to cross uh, but it's a it's a faster front line uh in the final um i still think i'm the fastest beginner um and i think i can find the front um the only query is at what cost um to get there but i think i will cross uh if you get almost across and not quite there for pure speed do you just have one one plan in mind you, you've got to get across ultimately uh, no, I don't think so. I don't think it's a, um, you know, lead at all cost scenario, but um, obviously that's one of his biggest assets, his early speed. So, um, yeah, if I can cross, you know, without doing anything ridiculous, um, obviously that's plan A for sure, but we won't just be going hammer and tongs uh, forever until we get there, that's for sure. Oh, it's good news if you haven't just got plan A because Andy Gath has got some really bad news for you, Andrew. Uh, take the pulpit. <coughs> uh, sorry, just uh, excuse me. Um, yeah, obviously, uh, visually, Lark Captain looked really quick last week, and he is a very fast horse, we know that, but just looking at the sectional times for the first 200 metres and the first 50, 100 metres and 200 metres of Drain the Swamp was quicker than Lark Captain. So having the advantage of the barrier draw, I think uh, Drain the Swamp can hold Lark Captain out, and obviously Mick would be pretty keen to hold the lead, seeing the early time Drain the Swamp's been able to win has been able, when it's able to lead. So it's going to be a really fast first quarter, and it's going to be, you know, quite interesting going into the first turn, but... I'm sticking to the sectionals, and I think Drain the Swamp will be able to hold. Where did you uh, get that? Where, where did you get that cracking stat about Drain the Swamp only ever winning when he leads? I listened to Watch Burning Questions last week. Uh, while I was holidaying up in the Gold Coast, and someone told me. <laughs> Who wins if Drain the Swamp leads? Um, I have no idea because I think they're both. What numbers it? Uh, 
I think he's not. I cast no doubt. Oh, no, no, it's, 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 been, it's been balloted, unfortunately. It ran down the track last week. Uh, it is a very hard race. I uh, No sectionals for me. I think La Captain can get across. And if La Captain doesn't get across, I reckon Aussie Playboy is almost a better chance of kicking through because he's held he's held Jillyby Nitro. He could have held Eva Mateo. And if they're all going in that line, I reckon Aussie Playboy might kick through. But La Captain's got three-star gate speed, Skeeter. It's going to be on early, I think, isn't it? Um, I think La Captain can probably get across. No doubt Mick Stanley will be trying to, to kick up and hold. But I just thought La Captain might have that pure pure gate speed to be able to get across, whereas Drain the Swamp has to muster a little bit more. So um, it's going to be a, a very interesting first few hundred metres. But I think if La Captain does cross and then uh, Mick Stanley sitting outside, they're going to be rolling along. I don't think there'll be a cheap quarter like uh, La Captain got last week. So it'll just be how much uh, those two up front have to do early and it could open it up for something like Kiss Me Elvis back in the field who's been flying off, uh, off a cold trip or uh, Aussie Playboy who had absolutely no luck last week. So I think it's probably a little bit more open, but um, like Captain's flying, so interested to see what he can do this week if he does cop a bit of Pete in front. I've, I've tipped Kiss Me Elvis. I reckon what we need to do, at least among the three of us, and we'll have a spot for the guest, is a scoreboard, a BQ scoreboard on these things. When the questions are asked, when answers are definitive, we'll work out just what's going on and maybe a text chat where we can uh, post that on socials as well rather than Andy just telling me I'm, I'm an absolute loser privately. Right. Question two of the burning questions is brought to you by the Fresh Connection. They export Australian fresh fruit. How many countries, you reckon? Not sure, but it's more than 35. It's definitely more than 35. Damien Glengarry is the export manager. I've never met him, but every review I get of him, he's killing it. Fresh Connection, specialised in citrus, table grapes, cherries, and mangoes. I do love a mango. Freshconnection.com.au. Second question. We have to go to Greg first again here because the team's flying. Does one over have one over? Former Kiwi friend, and that is, of course, Majestic Chick, even though they started different stretches of the draw. I've made some pretty big claims about where this horse is heading, Candyman. And that last win was a little bit unthinkable. Yeah, obviously, we got the right result, but uh, we didn't go about it how we would have liked. Um, making a mistake, we just had him a bit too fresh, I think, not having a run for three weeks, and he's a bit of a fiery customer. But the really pleasing thing about it was, um, for, our, for our point of view, that the horse has always, uh, always come to us with a bit of a one-trick pony um, kind of... Uh, um report about him and that seemed to be the case that he's only a front runner and had to keep him uh, out and running but uh, to see him come off a trail and still hit the line just as strong uh, even though he did make a mistake was very very pleasing so uh his manners are certainly starting to improve um and yeah we're really excited for what the uh, future might hold uh for this horse you pretty much written my form comment for me. That's exactly what I wrote about the fact that look, maybe he was a one trick pony um and a leader and people might have had that impression but no longer. You're pretty confident you'll be winning. And just to clarify, so it wasn't the plan to gallop and lose 40 metres at the start? Definitely not, no. Okay. I, I, asked, I asked Andy Gath, who's obviously uh, uh, well known as the, the greatest uh, uh, trotting trainer in the modern era, and I said, is, it, is it, are we better off to trot all the way or should we give him a bit of a head start and give him a beating? And he said, definitely try and trot all the way. It's a lot easier. So I didn't quite stick to that plan. But, um, yeah, hopefully we've got that out of our system and he can uh, – can trot away and get a tick to get himself back in the draw. And, um, yeah, it'd be interesting to see how the race unfolds and where we exactly end up in the run. Would obviously be tempo-related, but um, I think it's fair to say he's uh, he's got the form on the board over most of his rivals. So um, not going to be an easy assignment, but, yeah, I think he's still going to be hard to beat. Very confident. Very confident. I love it when blokes, you have to say both of their names. Can't just call you Andy. I asked Andy Gath. I asked Andy. I asked my mate Andy Gath. Andy, uh, I don't know how good Majestic Chick is. I went back and when it won those couple of races, looks pretty handy. Trial well, much better draw. I think it's going to be a good test. I still think one overall will be too good. I think he's, I think he's very, very, very good. What do you think? What are you asking? Are you asking? You. <laughs> you know when I said Andy, so you've got oh. to listen to the whole thing. I know, I know, I know you've been suffering from this virus and it's come back a little bit, but stick with me, Andy. Well, Greg said my whole name, so I was waiting for my whole name. No, it's okay. Um, Andrew Patrick Gath, what are your thoughts on one overall? I, yeah, no, I think he's one of the 
most progressive trotters coming up through the ranks and it was a terrific win last out of Ballarat. Not the ground that he lost, but just to see a horse be able to come from last, the last lap from Ballarat, you don't see very often and be able to get up was a huge effort. And um, yeah, I think providing he goes away and doesn't give away too big a handicap, hey, I think he'll be able to get the job done again. But Jessie Chick's a really nice mare. Um, her best form in New Zealand's quite good, but they can't do what one overall can do. So I think he'll be able to get the job done. I've said he might be the next Tornado Valley. I can't even look Andy in the eye when I say that. Andy Gaff in the eye when I say that. But Skeeter, your thoughts? That's, that's, that's Skeeter. That's Skeeter, your thoughts. Skeeter. Hello, Skeeter, your thoughts. Hi. Yeah, good. Okay. Um, no, I, I'm making it four out of four. I think he, uh, he'll he be too good. Obviously won't want to make a mistake uh, like last week. He never liked to see that. But as Greg mentioned, if he was just a little bit fresh, has had that run now. And that was a nice enough field that uh, that he gave a start and, and still beat there. So um, Majestic Chick, as Andy said, trialled nicely and uh, looks a nice mare. But, yeah, I just think there's something uh, a little bit special about, about one overall. So I think he'd be hard to beat as well. And a little bit of a, um, it's a, a little bit of book reading time from the form. This is, uh, I, this isn't even public. So, those that wondered whether he was a one-dimensional leader were savagely schooled five days back when he missed away by forty meters, yet still swept past quality. I've got no idea whether it was forty meters or not. It was about that. Question three, brought to you by APG. Go to apgold.com.au. Question number three, I'll go to you first, Skeet, because he's been your love child. But can Skeet's old mate Yankee keep his short course record flying? Or will the top this pressure burst his bubble in this grade? I think, I think you're abandoning ship. I am. I am. Uh, he was kind to me last week, but um, I think it's he's not going to get the easy lead and an easy uh, quarter like he did last week. There's going to be a lot more pressure on. Um, can't top this. Has been flying his past couple. Um, obviously led and uh, went 154 over the middle trip last week and. Um, I just think there's going to be, yeah, probably too much pressure this week. So, um, yeah, it, it's a tricky race to work out and even the map. I think they all have similar gait speed. So I don't know who the out-and-out -out leader is, but uh, I just think he's not going to get uh, get conditions to soon as much this week. Andy, Gath, what are your thoughts on uh, on this? I think, that, I think that there's been good evidence with the Yankee Gold that when he leads over these short trips and he gets his own way, he's very hard to beat. And when he cops heaps of pressure... He probably he probably can't cop the kind of pressure I think he's going to get here. No, probably not. He's done a great job, and we know this is his forte. He loves a short course racing, and um, but again, he's going to cop a little. You know, he's going to cop pressure throughout the race, and not sure he, he can sort of handle time pressure. But if he's getting physical pressure as well from can't top this out there, uh, from the outside, I'm guessing that's going to be enough to sort of bring him undone. But you know, they've done a great job with him. He's still going to be hard to beat, obviously, because I think he'll be the leader. But I think with the pressure he's going to cop, it's going to be hard for him in the last 100 metres. My best bet's in this race. And I reckon it'll be a bit of value. <laughs> Greg, what are your thoughts here on this question? Yeah, no, I'm going to agree with everything that's already been said pretty much. Um, nothing really further to add. I, I think he'll run a valiant race in front uh, and, and probably go down fighting. But, um, yeah, I think there'll be too much heat from basically start to finish to, uh, to see him winning this race. So, um, unfortunately for connections, I think... Uh, place bet uh, will be best for them. Are you sitting on a small chair? Are you sitting on your own feet or are you sitting on the ground? On the ground. What a warrior. At the, at the back of a sawdust pile, actually. It's nice and comfortable. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah, you would, no, just no piles there. Just just get yourself a little, it's like a little bean bag. I like that. <laughs> uh, and Andy, I am worried about you because I heard you coughing a little bit earlier again. Like you You've gone to Queensland. Obviously, the doctor said you've got to get to a warmer climate, and you went up there to the mansion. Uh, but you don't. You still don't seem 100%. And I've got to tell you, you haven't got the tan that I was expecting. Is everything A-OK -okay health-wise? Yeah, no, everything's fine. As we spoke earlier, it's just old age kicking in, j Bond, But you know, I just have to deal with it. Yeah, I, I said I've got the earlier stages. And Greg, even though he looks like he's 14, he's uh, not that far behind. So he can sit on a sawdust pile now, but for how long? Question four, the last of our burning questions, is with thanks to Felvo Fruits. More fruit, specialist in table grapes since the 1960s, back when the Beatles were big. Michael and Josie Felvo are keeping the tradition going and everyone loves their grapes. Keep an eye out for Felvo Fruits. You know, even if you don't think you will, you will love them. Question four, Andy, I thought we'd lock horns the entire burning questions. There's been a lot of concurrence. Let's get busy here. Is the hysteria over hysteria? By the way, I don't think there is that much hysteria. I just thought a hysteria and a story would sound good together. 
Uh, three-year-old filly now with uh, Emma Stewart. Justified, or did she just beat up on weaker rivals last time? And let's talk more broadly about that race because Skeeter needed a Panadol after she looked at it. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a big plus jump for Soho Astoria. Don't want to upset Greg, but I only beat Laura J. McRae last start. So, uh, yeah, no, but again, um, since she's got Emma and Clayton, she's done a wonderful job. All her wins have been dominant. But this is a huge class rise. It's a quite an even field. And a lot of these fillies have sort of gone, been in Group 1 races before and, you know, performed quite well. So I know Mark Pitt's taken the drive and he probably had the choice of the four of them or at least three of them anyway because Jody always drives heavenly sign. It's definitely the one to beat, but I wouldn't be jumping on in any silly odds. Um, again, as I said, it's a pretty open race and it's the biggest test for it. It's a winning hope, but I'm not as keen on it as you are, Javon. Well, it's not. It's... A lot of these races, you've got to be a little bit intuitive. And look, I don't even know how, I really don't know. And I don't even know if Greg will know 100%, but I'll ask him. Hi, Greg. How are you? I'm about to ask you a question. Very well. Um, whether, when you're the number one driver for Emma and Clayton, whether you do get a choice, because it's certainly, I've certainly read a fair bit into the fact that um, Pity's been driving our little jet frequently and has seemingly chosen to go with Soho Historia. Yeah, no, it's it's different for different races and obviously different sets of horses um, in, in that camp, in my experience. Um, yeah, generally speaking, obviously, um, the drivers obviously stick with certain connections um, as far as ownership goes uh, is probably the main way that, um, that, that these sort of scenarios unfold. Um, quite often, if it's just um, something that they, they don't have a long-term relationship with any set of owners that uh, they will give the driver the choice um, on any given race. But um, yeah, quite often, yeah, a little bit of loyalty to the ownership group um, comes into play. So that may, may have a factor um, in the decision for this race for sure. I went out wide there. I mean, we, 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 great to discuss something else, but the burning question remains, is his Soho Historia the one to beat Gregory? Um, yeah, look, I think so. Um, yeah, even though it did only beat Lara J. McRae, I think its wins have been been um, been pretty good. Um, the way it's gone about it is a, is a class rise, of course. But I agree with Andy. You couldn't take anything ridiculously uh, short about it uh, if you were looking to have a bet um, in this race. But it's definitely a winning hope. And I think with Mark Pitt um, retaining the drive on it, it uh, I think there's a fair bit of weight that actually goes into that on this occasion. So, um, yeah, definitely a chance. But it's still an open race. Skeeter, I feel like unintentionally I've aligned myself with Soho Story more than I was intending to. But the way I'm thinking here, I don't think our little jet and heavenly sign are A graders. Joe and Joe's drawn very poorly. Relentless Me's only ever won when it's led. So it's not that I think Soho Historia is the second coming of Talamade Lombo. Just that I think it might be better than these. What are your thoughts? What, what did you think she was going to start? What did you say pre, pre-recording? That, that kind of... You don't bring that on here. I've marked her two dollars, but it wouldn't surprise me if the wave. You've got a nice little smile you're frozen with there. It's a showing a little bit of an underbite there, Skeeter. So uh, I reckon if the wave starts and the money comes, the wave might turn into a tsunami, and she might start crazy, crazy short if everyone believes that she's way better than the others. But I've marked her two dollars. I am. Um, yeah, it's. Such an open race. I could make a case for every horse, I think. Um, I was going to say when I first saw the question, have I been living under a rock? Because I haven't seen any um, any boom about her. So I wasn't sure what that was all about. And I thought I'd miss something along the way. But I've started. Um, yeah, I've, prob- <laughs> I've, I've been like everyone. I've just probably read the most into the fact that Pity is, um, is sticking with that filly. Um, that's probably the best push. But, yeah, like I said, such an even race. Every single case horse has a has a chance and I think it's a field um field job in the quaddy. So um yeah she's probably the one to beat but I'm saying that with zero confidence because there's no doubt this is a massive jump up from what she's been beating prior. Well the price that I said was she might and I was look I was it I was going to the deep a dollar forty five I said. I think it ultimate stride last week. I opened a dollar eighty and uh ended up starting three fifty which I marked it. Uh there's a little pat on the back. Well done Bon you're a champion. Now Gregory, your best bet on the program. Uh, sticking with the old boy Triple Eight. Um, he was awesome, obviously last week. Um, I think he'll only be improved on that run. Um, very similar sort of field and drawn a bit better this time around. So, um, yeah, I think um, think he'll get the job done for us again.
With all due respect, Candyman, you're going to have to add two more winners to that list. This is just going to have to be a skeeter multi. I'm not taking a dollar thirty-three chance as your best bet on the card. Can we multi it up with Minty? Should be winning moments like these. You would have thought. I, I think she she gets her chance. I think this will, uh, race will actually suit her a bit better than what um, last week's will, and um, she probably needed that hit out too, as it's turned out. So um, yeah, they're both very very good chances. We're up to a dollar seventy. Chubby Checker uh, to trail Tuppence and Transit. Can we get can we get three home in this little multi? Some chance. Um, yeah, he's trained on well since Ballarat and he's got a good trailing draw, but uh, it is a big class rise um, in the field, I think, from what he met at Ballarat. So um, he's going to need to improve on that run. But um, yeah, it looks like he's going to get a good run in transit. So shouldn't be too far away. And while we're at it, if La Captain does find the front easy enough, um, he won't be far off him either. So could be a good night. Greg is going to win every race in the car. He, he was trying with Triple Eight for a start and now we've got a $12 multi. Outstanding stuff from the candy man. Skeeter, your best on the program. Uh, well yes. done with Yankee Gold last week. Only only one person missed out on the best bet last week. <laughs> Thanks, Bond. Uh, we won't go there, but no, I'm uh, I'm going race ten. I'm a Maori Jet. Um, I think I just really couldn't find anything that I was confident could could beat her. She's really found her form. Glenn Craven's two from two on her, so uh, I just think they gel well, and that looks a really good race for her. She's in the zone. Andy, before I give my best bet, you're going to go last. I just want to know what race you're in for a start. Uh, I'm not sure. I can't remember. It's going to make it harder. Yeah. That's going to make it harder. Um, I So I'm a Moldy Jet will be my best bet on the car, but I'm going for one that I think will be a little bit of value. I reckon the race maps that first league of the quality for Fire Rock, Fire Roll perfectly. Yankee Gold in front. Can't top this outside the leader. Fire Rock, Fire Roll, 1-1. One, one. He's been massacred in front the last couple of times. He's had a go at it. Following a helmet, peeling, bang, boom. He's my best on the card because I'm trying to go for a little bit of glory. Now, Andy, I'll reveal to the punters what race this horse is in if you tell me its name. Yeah, well, he didn't. He's going for the fourth pick of the tub stables. I think Chubby Checker be able to get the job done. Um, is a horse I had opportunity to buy and an agent come over the top and offered a little bit more money. For him, so I missed out on him. So I know his whole career, he's quite a nice horse, and I thought he won quite well first up and got the ideal draw and informed driver and stable. So I'm going with Chubby Checker. So don't let me down, Greg. As I should do my best. We're week. very, we're, we're very confident it'll be behind the leader. Yeah, Tappen, Tappen's the lead and won't hand up to Belmont. They won't play those sort of games, will they, Andy? I, I doubt it. I think Tappen's is a natural leader. He's run all his good races in front, so he should be able to. As long as Greg holds up, I'm sure he'll be, you know, somewhere close towards the finish. And how about your your superstar, the best horse in your stable, Balenciaga? Get it with the last? No, I don't think he can cross the one. So I think he probably has to lead to be a winning hope. Um, quite happy with him, but I think Viola Boy probably hold him out early. You've all been outstanding. It's been an absolute pleasure. Greg's going to have pins and needles throughout the quadriceps and the calves, but he'll be right. And he's going to get seven winners, apparently. I don't know how many drives he's got, but he's going to win nearly every race at Tabcourt Park, Melton on Saturday night. Well done, Andy. I'm sure you'll bounce back this week. Great job, Skeeter. Thanks, Bon. And great job, Bon, as always. You've killed it, mate. You've got high standards for yourself and you live up to them. That's been Burning Questions. We'll catch you again next week.